Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm here today to talk to you about filament care. Proper filament storage to protect your filament from being ruined by humidity and moisture. Your 3D printer's filament will absorb moisture from the air and that moisture will degrade the quality of your print and reduce your printing success by creating all kinds of frustrating 3D printing defects that will be difficult to solve because they are unsolvable, being that they are due to the filament itself being infected with moisture. Today, I am going to show you a simple low cost technique to properly store your printer in something we call a dry box. However, I want to clarify something before we start. These are filament dehydrators. This is an iBoss. This is a Sunlu S2. A dehydrator is for filaments that has already been compromised by moisture and humidity. These machines, will dehydrate your filament to remove the moisture that they have already absorbed. A dry box is to prevent the filament from absorbing this moisture in the first place. Many times I see confusion where people expect their dry box to dehydrate their filament. Your dry box will not dehydrate filament that is already moist. Your dry box will prevent the filament from becoming moist in the first place. Once your filament has absorbed moisture and is now compromised and showing print defects due to moisture, such as stringing, popping, random gaps, and other oddities, you will need to use that filament in a filament dehydrator, such as the iBoss or the Sunlu S2 or the many other brands that are available on the market. They will bake your filament and remove the moisture, returning your filament to a usable state. We are going to walk through assembling a very simple dry box. For this dry box, you are going to need a 20 quart tote, such as this Sterilite. This low cost model has a simple snap on cover and only costs a couple of dollars each. And it's slightly more expensive, far superior version this one, which is also 20 quarts, but has a snap on cover that also features an airtight seal. This container is not only made of far more durable material, it also has a see-through cover. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that you choose this container and forget this container exists. When building dry boxes, it's very important to use the same container every single time. That way they are stackable. These containers stack in a very stable manner, allowing you to line your shelving with them, storing all of your filament. While keeping your filament safe and well protected is nice, the purpose of this dry box is more than that. It is to prevent your filament from being exposed to the humidity in your environment. To do that, we are going to add desiccant to this box. There are a few ways to go about it. You may have access to cheap, low-cost items such as Damprid, or even the dollar store version of it known as Moisture Eliminator. While these two options will indeed work and are easily attainable, I don't recommend them as your first choice because they utilize a different dehumidifying method than desiccant. The problem with this kind of stuff is this cheap dollar store stuff uses this weirdo stuff, which you could easily knock over and spill all over your dry box. Also, it absorbs the moisture and then the water falls below it and collects on the bottom. This is not something you want in your dry box. This here, damp bread and similar, also works the same way. It has this flaky stuff in it, which is a single use material that dissolves and sends the water down into a vat below. This will, of course, absorb moisture and help your dry box. However, you will have a container full of water sitting in your dry box, which is a spill threat. So we are going to not use these options if you don't have to. What we are going to use is some simple reusable desiccant packs, such as these 20 gram drying dries 
or far better, this high quality 100 gram dry tote. These contain desiccant beads that absorb moisture, trapping the moisture inside the beads, and in most cases, changing the color of the bead so you can tell those beads are full and go through the process explained by the manufacturer on how to redry the beads to prepare them for reuse. Typically, this includes a short time in an oven or a short time in a microwave. Looking over the reviews from various products, some people have had less than perfect luck doing this, while others have had very good luck. I think it's very important to do things correctly to avoid potential user error. The process of using these is very simple. Take your container and line it with filament. Here's a spool from Creality. Here's a spool from Inland. Here's a spool from Jiao. And here's a spool from Sunlu. And here's another spool from Jiao. For those of you good at math, that's a whopping five full spools in one $10 container. This brings me to another reason I don't recommend these big containers as they will take away your ability to use all five spools. For bamboo users who might be wondering, the bamboo spool is in fact a touch bigger and you will not be able to fit five. We will then go ahead and dehumidify this box using desiccant packs such as dry tote. This is a large 100 gram packet with rechargeable instructions on the back. I'm simply going to go ahead and drop it into the tote and close the lid. However, if you prefer to use a lesser cost packet or a smaller packet that has more versatile uses, you can simply use something such as these 20 gram dry and dry packets. You would do it exactly the same way. Just grab some packets and toss it into your tub. How many do you need? I don't know. There's very little air inside this tub and our next step will help you determine if you need to use more or could get away with less. That step involves adding a simple hygrometer. A hygrometer such as this costs only a few dollars a piece and you can buy them on Amazon and other online stores, probably even stores local to you for just a few dollars a piece. All I'm going to do is open up my box and slide one of these hygrometers between the tub and my filament. Now you can stack these up on your shelf and monitor the humidity inside your fancy new dry box. Let's go ahead and place one on the outside of the dry box and let some time pass. And now it's time for the bonus round. Earlier we talked about these filament dehydrators, the iBoss and the Sunlu S2. While the Sunlu S2 does not have a desiccant compartment, the iBoss does. You will find it right here in the corner of your dehydrator. And your 20 gram dry and dry silica packs will fit inside that compartment. Not only will one fit, but two will fit. Meaning you can fit a whopping 40 grams of silica into your iBoss dehydrator. Check your dehydrator to see if it has a silica compartment as well. And if it does, use it. After about one hour, the hygrometer outside the boxes is reading 55%, while the hygrometers inside the box is reading 35% and 25%. These two hygrometers are still continuing to drop, and I expect they will both reach roughly 10%. And here you have a simple method to properly and safely store your filament so that you won't break your spools lose your spools, or worse, expose your filament to moisture and humidity. You are watching the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3drundown.com, and making these very cool dry boxes to protect your filament was today's adventure.